You're on the dock with Pastor Troy here. We're ready to go in the studio on the dock.org. You can find us there. New releases every Tuesday and Thursday. Find out what we're dropping next Tuesday or next Thursday and get on top of it. You can also go back at ORG and you can go find our archives and go watch stuff. We want to have you do that. We're all about conversations to propel your faith out of the shallows and into the deep. We're available on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. Go find us on YouTube. We want to up our subscription. So go hit like and notify and hit that little bell. And we appreciate that. And we're also on Google Play, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and SermonNet. And we have social media presence on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and now on Getter. We're hoping to live, uh, to do build a stream on Getter very soon. So we'll be working on that. And uh, when you find us on whatever platform, hit subscribe, hit their notification, tell other people about it, share what you're doing, help us be a contagion for Jesus. We've got some great things to share with you. You're gonna love our programs. And we would love to have you as a partner. There's four partnership levels. Go to Patreon, check out the On The Dock uh, Patreon page. You can be a partner four ways. You can also be a sponsor if you've got a business or a ministry or organization. Uh, go find out all the ways that you can be a sponsor with us. We'd love to have you as a part of our program here, on the dock.org. Go find it there. Links to everything are there. And if you have questions, info at on the dock.org. We'd love to have you. So we got a great show for you today. Got Mother Beth in the studios. We're gonna do this walk away sub series today. Mother Beth, doing well still yep doing good. hey i got hot in the last episode good i just want you to know you you was that just one degree or did you get pushed into going another degree no that one that one degree made me hot gosh mother knows best uh <laughs> ben i got hot i was gonna gripe that i thought i can't gripe because i just flogged her for not going to 70 can't i thank god I didn't. i'd have melted my body can't take 70 you spent all your gripe for the day i know i mean you think with this level of fat i can handle anything but, but it, it fat makes you cold <laughs> or hot and Lucas Winkler's over there. Lucas, our techno wizard over there. He's on camera, but off mic. We're going to try to get him a mic here soon. We're working on that. And we are back on the set here at On The Dock. We're doing the Worship Leaders of Southern Illinois series and On The Dock Season 2 Super Series. Some 30 plus episodes, 10 different worship leaders. It's, gonna, it's an incredible series we got planned with a great grand finale. You'll have to find out more about it later. But we got in the studio here for her walk away, her part three. It's, it's episode it's part 27 in the series because it's a huge series, guys. But uh, this series, this is her third show with us, and we really appreciate Hannah Heron from Victory Christian Fellowship, worship leader Murfreesboro, Illinois, that hails from Marion, Illinois. Yes. She goes from Marion to Murfreesboro. She Through passes the wilderness. us. Can you believe she passes us to go there to worship? I mean, Victory Christian Fellowship must have it happening. They Obviously. They've got a fine, fine team of pastors <laughs> there. Husband and wife pastor have been passing there a long time. Uh, 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 Frank and Bonnie. How do you say it? The, Voorhees. Voorhees. Yep. I always want to put a K there. Voorhees. Voorhees. They've been there, founders of that church, yes. right? Long time. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. They go back at lovely church, 10 o'clock, 1030 on Sundays, 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. Go check out their church. But she goes way past us to go there. We need to figure out how to intercept her. And, you know, if we can get her, if we intercept her in the name of Jesus, we're so sorry, Pastor Voorhees. We love you and we want her to get to you. But man, man, she's so talented. You're blessed. And we, you. if we a lot get, of people we pop get, tires passing community. I know, faith. I know. And, and and I live here and I've been telling people I have a 30 out six with a scope on it. I, I've been telling her, I've been telling her. She's going to get to the intersection one day and her tires going to go flat. I said, siphon just enough gas. Just turn left and get, come on to Community Faith for the church for the week. It's going to look bad if we shoot her tires out every week. But so, we could. here's the thing. I did actually have a flat tire yesterday. So I oh, no. Oh, no. Where, where, where did it happen? Where did it happen? I don't know. I, my car was in the driveway. And my dad's like, Hannah, your tire's flat. Apparently I ran over a nail or something. Mm, yeah. Happened so, at 148 and 13. Yeah, 148 and 13. <laughs> I Pastor Troy. Say, you know. I thought, I, I thought, I, I thought I'd, I'd miss that shot. I obviously hit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hit the shot. I, I have to use a 30 out six because you, you need the air to go down fast. You, you must have nicked it. I must have nicked <laughs> it. Yeah, man, nicked yes. it. You know. We had another Lovely. flat tire on vacation. We did too. Brand new tires. Had the tires. I've had the tires three days. Three oh days. my gosh. Three brand new tires for the sports car. 
you know. So I told the AAA guy the story from uh, our last AAA. It was just it was a, He loved it. He loved it. It was a good story. That's a good story. Yep. We'll tell that someday on the on the story, on the show with you. Yeah, it's we'll just story. tell it on the show. Just tell that story. <laughs> just but that story. Hannah drives past me. Now that we know their dad plays saxophone like that, and her brother plays, and her mom plays. Gosh, a y'all lot need of to tires get tires to pop. Y'all need yeah, you Kev- have to hijack all of them. You're gonna have to get Kevlar tires. Or was there's an old movie where they had that bus in the movie way back with the movie, and they they put iron plates by the tires so the bullets couldn't get to the. They tire. should probably invest in an armored suburban. Yeah, y'all gonna go through Carbondale anyway. It's gotta be like uh, Pastor Warriors. You're gonna have to buy these guys some sort of armored <laughs> like like the beast like the president has. It's gotta be like Mel Gibson's movie. The, but, um, uh, it, Braveheart. Braveheart. Great movie. No, his no. first movie. <laughs> Bus on Braveheart. <laughs> it is a great movie, though. It I is. was thinking the Die Hard guy <laughs> my when, they, when they had the bus and they shot the bus. Oh, off. I was thinking of Mad Max. Yeah, that one. That that's a crazy movie. I date you too much, but no, we 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 <laughs> <laughs> were a movie. We hey, look, we're we're in all of you. You you've got amazing talent. Thank you. And and we we, we will try not to shoot your tires out and be caught, uh, <laughs> and be caught. <laughs> Appreciate <laughs> it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Uh, but you have a talented. You're, you're talented. Your family's talented. Your church is blessed. And, and we do nothing but lift you up and, you. and encourage you there. But if the road's so bad, <laughs> if the road's so bad, you can't get to Murfreesboro, just call Ben the- and bring your whole, have your dad bring the saxophone. <laughs> Listen, pull in here. Because I did see you guys cancel services sometimes. If, with weather, yeah. You do cancel, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get a deal. Here's the deal. <laughs> pastor Voorhees, here's the deal, brother. I'm going to make a deal with your pastor. I've never met, I, I think I've met your pastor a couple times, but but I'm going to make a deal for you. You get a weather Sunday, y'all get here, because we don't cancel. Because I live here. <laughs> <laughs> so true. We don't cancel. Yeah. Not for we, nothing. We don't cancel. If power goes out, he plays acoustic. We just, mm-hmm. we're going to worship. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying we never cancel, but if the roof was off the building. We, we might just worship out in the garage. But by in general, we're going to worship here. Yeah. We just have that. I just have that personality. The sh- I, you play football. I'm a football coach. You play in all kinds of weather. If you get a weather day and you can't go there because they're closed, you come here. You tell Pastor Roy, we'll get we'll put the link to our worship service on his site and, and we'll have church for you guys. And he can come. And he can speak. You know, he can come and speak and share, and we'll just have joint worship service. Right. You tell him that, or I'll give you a link to it afterwards, and y'all can put it out. But but tell him we, we'll earn our keep if we if we borrow you guys. We'll earn our keep. You know, we want to help out in the kingdom any way we can. Uh, man, you've been great. You're so you're still are you still single? Yeah, you were single in the previous two episodes. You know. Hey, I have to ask because, you, you know. my phone, you know, we said no, to the- But you got to remember, this is Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, and Tuesday. And Tuesday, Thursday, and ter- Tuesday episodes, a lot can happen from a Tuesday to a Thursday. Into ah, another Tuesday, yeah. yeah. but we won't know. But the magic of TV is, this is, could have all been the same day we did this. But but we won't tell you that because it didn't feel good. Uh, so not only is she worship lead over at uh, Victory Christian Fellowship, she's a part of the Cedar Sessions team. And um, you can go to YouTube and look at the Cedar Sessions. Incredible. You can see one of her, uh, one of her own songs called Keep Me. And um, features her with Ben coming in with nothing else uh, as, as a part of that song. Check that out. We'll also be featuring you at the end of this episode, all three of your episodes. We've got you in doing a special song in studio here. And um, find out when the next Cedar session is and, and, and go find out more about what Hannah and not only her, but what her and her friends are doing and amazing work with the Cedar Sessions team. So uh, we're excited about what you're doing there. And uh, we're just we're just trying to figure out how to carjack you and get you here permanently. So, I mean, we're bad like that here at Community Faith Church. I mean, we're going to have to build like a holding cell. Something that feels like it's like a Holiday Inn that feels like they're not really in prison. But they, we don't want them to like leave, leave. Mm. So. We could put like, bars on the back. Kind of a Kathy window. Bates type thing, you know, where you kind yeah. of chain them to a bedpost and then you bring them out for worship. It'd be great. I That's know. terrible. We only do that to people. We we only do don't that. know who Kathy we Bates only, is. You don't know who Kathy Bates is. <laughs> no. She's the one who trapped the guy and kept the guy in, her, and kept the guy in his house. You're aging yourself. That's not nice. She broke his legs to keep him there. It's oh not good. Lord. We, we won't, won't do that. We, we won't, we do won't that. break We legs. won't do that. What, we will she, pop tires. She, she only needs, <laughs> which, which, which leg do you play the drums with? I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God. We only do this to people we highly respect. We, we don't threaten everybody. Gosh. Next time you'll bring your security team. Sometimes with love hurts. Love hurts. Yeah. Love hurts. All right. Tell me, uh, as we get into this wrap away, uh, wrap up session, um, what are what are some of the biggest challenges as a worship leader? As you come in each week, you've got to be fresh a little bit. You, you've got those songs. How do you sit down and 
come up with what you're going to do each week? What, what What's your process there? Yeah, so we all, you know, we get there, um, like I said, usually around like 9 o'clock or so. 9 o'clock, you have 10.30 stars, you do this in an hour and a half, you're yeah. ready to go. Yep. Um, so we uh, kind of just get together, you know, catch catch everyone up on how our week has been and um, just kind of share and um, it's really kind of just what we what we kind of sense the Lord's wanting to do that day. We don't we don't pick the songs, you know, previously like on a different day or whatever. We all just kind of come together, put our heads together. You don't and, use worship planner. What is it? No. What it was what we use here? Where you put it? Up? Planning center. Planning center. They got yeah. planning center here, and they find out mm-hmm. who who's going to show up. Yeah, and yeah. What songs we're going to do? And all that. Yeah. So, so yeah, we just kind of put our heads together and uh, just listen for what the Lord wants to do that day. And like I said, you know, sometimes we we. Uh, we try to make sure we're not, well, not sometimes we do try to make sure that we don't try to have like a formula mentality. Like we have to have these fast songs first and then these slow songs. Like, you know, sometimes we mix it up. Um, sometimes we do, we have like five songs out and we only do two, you know, just kind of. So you put fall. together a list and then just trust the Lord. In yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, do you ever find yourself doing something that's not on the list? Something comes out, something begins uh, to move or you extend something? Occasionally. Or... Yeah. Sometimes we do. Um, and that's always fun because then you have to try to. Okay, how do, how do, how, okay, how does your how do your tech people know what song to put up? Because you know people need the song up these days because we don't have hymn books. Yeah. But so how do your people know what to put up if you just that morning did it? Well, so yeah, we we put all the after we pick the songs, um, we go back to the computer and you know someone puts puts all the songs in, in the, the list yeah, in the and then you know they they everyone kind of what knows. do you guys use for that we, we, we've asked that in uh, show. easy worship easy yeah, worship easy worship yeah now, we've had what, what what are the different ones we have pro pro, 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 pro presenter. presenter pro presenter yeah somebody else had one other too easy worship there was one other song. christian mingle yeah <laughs> that's not that <laughs> <laughs> Farmer, farm, farm, was it farmers farmers only. Only. Farmersonly.com. Uh, farmersonly.com. You have you tried to Farmers be. Only? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Murfreesboro. I mean, we're in the Midwest. You know, I know I you got farms valid. all over Murfreesboro <laughs> and Marion. Beth could have done FarmersOnly.com. Nah. Yeah. She wouldn't have gotten me. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. She, she'd have been sick. There's not a lot of people using that. How do we get to Farmers Only? I, I so no so Easy Worship. Easy ben Worship was Christian real Eagle. popular. When I first started the churches like in Highland, Easy Worship was, was like the thing. Cheap. It, it was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was like but early on. It's functional. It's very yeah, functional. It's very really functional. easy yeah. to use. Yeah. Yeah. It's Easy Worship. Easy Worship. So, so is it easy? I think maybe two people have used easy. something different than easy. most people have used Pro Presenter that we've had, but... but Easy, so you do that. You, mm-hmm. You're not using sermon planner. Are you? So you're getting everything ready. You're getting your lyrics in. You're mm-hmm. able to import those in, and, and you're you're able ready to go at ten thirty. Yeah. Or do you show up like? T- are you are you like? Are, are you, do your people? <laughs> let me ask a question. Do your people actually get there at ten thirty? Like are people our, in Murfreesboro on time? Uh, most of them are. Our, yeah. our people are terrible. <laughs> most people get there at ten to just talk. They wow. do. Okay, listen to her. <laughs> They're excited. If you really like each other, come a little earlier. Community, we have free coffee, and do, you can do, actually yeah. talk to each other. We have some people that come early, but we have a lot of people that just come burning in about five minutes after. You can just tell their hair's still wet. They're still trying to trying to get there. You know, you know. Yeah. We have a local state police guy that just stalks people in our parking lot. He, he's out here. He just stalks everybody. I'm sure he's followed about half. Maybe some of them are late because he's been talking to them, trying to talk to Maybe them. Maybe so. Yeah, people pull in here. They, my wife pulled in one day in the car. She she was going a little fast between the intersection and our turn, which is only, you know, a couple hundred yards. <laughs> and uh, he pulled in behind her, and she pulled into our driveway, which is here at the house. And he pulls in behind her, and he says, ma'am, do you know how fast you were going? She said, no. And she, he said, 60. Her words were, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> She's got a Dodge Challenger 392 with 500 horsepower. You know, it's got more, ca- it's, ca- it's capable of being at 90 by oh, then. Beth. But she was like, is that all? And, 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 and it's not like she was trying to speed. The thing just wants to run, you know? It, it just wants to run. And she's just going up to a turn, so you don't even think about it. You don't look, no, you you don't, don't even you don't look down, it. you just press it and it goes, you know? you know. And so she turns in, he pulls in, and he says, and, and I, I, I suppose you live here. I suppose, yeah, I suppose you live here. You're not trying to hide from me. Uh, yes, I live here, and I assume this is going to be the address on your driver's license. Yes, yes it will it be. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, and we've had other staff that he's pulled in behind too here and done the same yep. thing with. Yep. Yeah. Now, why did you pull in here? I work here. <laughs> you know. So we have our like our own state police out here. Yeah. So yeah, be very careful. Uh, I, and so when we listen, when we shoot your tire out. We may have to shoot from more than one direction because they may be listening. And so we need to make sure we affect 
the sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. How that we need to deflect <laughs> the sound. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 Because you know, some places they have the sound systems kind of pinpointing where shootings mm-hmm. come from. Like mm-hmm. cities, they have the, the sound equipment and they can pinpoint where shooters are coming from. It's going to be real confusing if you shoot from your house because it's going to reflect <laughs> off of the church building. Yes. So what we're going to yeah, need is I'm going to need you to set up on another intersection. We're going to need a cross shoot. It's going to mm-hmm. really mess them mm-hmm. up. What does that have to do with people being late to church? Mm, I so don't know. Much. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> we're in episode three, part three. We can talk about anything we want in part three because that's what it's late. Like. Our people are so late. There'll be like five people here when it starts. Be five. You look at it and you go, this is terrible. I, we, does everybody have COVID again? 20 minutes later. There's 20 yeah. minutes later, the room's full. You know, <laughs> it's just, it's like, where are you coming in? You know? <laughs> Including uh, his wife. If we put food out, they show up earlier. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's expensive, though. But we, you can't, today you can't afford it. I was thinking today, if, if I had food every Wednesday, I would have a packed house. I People are pretty good this week showed up because I, I yeah. browbeat them. I said, I hope as many people will show up this Wednesday as we had last week when I had food. You can come for the free coffee, too. And I think people felt guilty and they showed up. But <laughs> but I don't know if that'll work this week. So I, next week, I'll have to post something like, we got some Fritos or something, you know. Yeah, but you can't. The <laughs> bag of Fritos is $9 now, so you can't afford them. And then $20 to get the gas to go get it. So you can't afford anything. $20 so. to get gas. No, gas oh, is expensive. In Seattle, where true. Caleb's at, it's almost ten dollars a gallon now. Oh, God. You can't afford believe what it cost us to fill up our our, our challenger. Our, ca- our challenger I normally imagine. was 50, 54. We use high. It's now a hundred, right at a hundred dollars. Oh yeah, it's the, sickening. The Yukon is brutal. <gasps> oh, so bad. Yeah, it's brutal. A brutal, oh, brutal. It's like a thirty gallon yeah. tank. Oh my oh. gosh. Oh my gosh. I feel like a rich man with three quarters of a somewhere tank in here. Right we have a yes. show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you get all that together, you're able to put together your, your video, your sound, your, your team, ready to go at 1030 mm-hmm. and, and dial that in. Now, let me just ask you a question. You've, you've, been, you've been involved in worship since you're about 15, you're 23 now, you've been in that same church. Kind of put a line in COVID for now, for like, two, like, like 2020s, put a line there, mark that. But go back in front of that for about those four, five, six years. What, what have you seen, what, what did worship to you? I gotta get my question right here. I mean, <laughs> How have you seen worship change over these last eight, nine, ten years? What What are some big differences you're seeing today from what was happening back when you started? I think um, I've noticed in some ways um, there's more um, there's more intention behind what you're doing. There's intentionality there. Um, in other ways, I feel like it's really easy to just sing a song. And then, you know, like, like we said earlier, just kind of like punching in the clock or whatever. Define, like. define intention. Intention is in the, 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 the really digging into the heart of that song or, yeah. or, or the, why you picked it or help me, mm-hmm. help me with that a little bit. Yeah. So just, uh, not picking a set just because that's what we think is going to please the people. Um, or even please us like you know we have I have to be careful with that too like not be like oh we need to do this song because it's like the hottest song right now or yeah. it's cool or that's what people want to hear it's like well is that what God wants to hear right. um, and I just think I, I'm seeing like people being more intentional about that but then at the same time I'm also just seeing this or have seen um, where I think people it, it is really easy to just sing a song and so there's not that effort or that excellence put behind it as in like so more intention purposeful picking yes. the song that's going to connect it, that's connecting here right. despite whether it's popular or not right it's something that really means connecting something. to the heart yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. a really good way way, way 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 to put it so you see more of that any other changes you've seen in the last eight ten years really evolving developing um a lot of i think the i think the typical expression of worship has changed like when it comes to songwriting um there's a lot of really like pe- people are like wording. Th- I can't even think of an example right now, but I think the way that people are wording certain things is different and it really feels just raw and like you can really relate to it. You feel a little bit more, more, more unplugged feeling. I don't know yeah. That's the word to say yeah. Or and I can't even think of an example right now, but just like people aren't afraid to, uh, like if, even if it may not sound as, uh, I don't know, conventional or whatever, like just knowing that even if it may not be a typical way to 
express or sing something it's still like there's just something really real and authentic now you're in a spirit-filled church correct yes so the spirit moves in your church people speak okay somebody may have a word of prophecy or something like that Mm -hmm. so you come out of a church background where there's there's you come into this already with with a movement of the spirit and a mm-hmm. comfortability of that, yeah. that maybe some churches don't have <laughs> in in a spot in a spontaneous moment coming so mm-hmm. it, spontaneous worship's not something that would be you guys are used to some spontaneity yeah. spontaneity in worship yeah. yeah so but i think one of the things i've seen change dramatically is spontaneity in worship spontaneity in worship was in the past reserved for the charismatic pentecostal church mm-hmm. that may need to play some minor chords while somebody's waiting on a prophecy in tongues or something and, and 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 believe it or not, I felt a lot of times that was programmed. It's yes. that right spot. Let's play the minor chords for about four or five minutes awkwardly till sister so and so gets her word for the day. Yeah. And it's almost as planned as well as the doxology is going to be put behind the offering. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Yeah. So so it's it's expected. Yeah. It's programmed. Yeah, so right. I, I've seen a lot of that. In my charismatic early days. Beth seen that where you know you just kind of almost it's almost as programmed as anything. Mm-hmm. But then, but then IHOP came out. International House of Prayer, no, International House of Prayer in Kansas City. <laughs> and I got very involved in that, you know, 15, 20 years ago when it first started. And they they had entire spontaneous worship while people prayed spontaneously. Mm-hmm. So they could they could yeah. do a song and go into spontaneous worship and just wait on the spirit of God while people prayed and cried out to God. Yeah. And they were really the first people I was seeing doing just, just extensive spontaneous, I'm not talking about charismatic break for a right. movement of the spirit. They were doing extensive spontaneous worship. And some of their spontaneous worship was better than the song came up to it because mm-hmm. the musicians were just cutting loose yeah. and there was a movement of the spirit and that thing can go on whether it would be for a minute or whether it be for 10 minutes or maybe somebody would come and just, I, I would hear somebody there begin to sing a almost like a psalm, a, a psalm that God was giving them. And it, I was I was there for many of them. I'd go there and work. I, a lot of times I'd do three or four retreats a year and I'd just go to the house of prayer and just stay there almost all night long. And then I'd sleep and then go back. I love night worship there. And I go to night watch and I loved it. And that's where I met Jonathan and a lot of the people there mm-hmm. and that we work with here uh, sometimes. And they were they were doing spontaneous. And, and I took people out there. I took people from my church at Pawnee and said, I want you to go see this. I, I would like us to be able, if God's moving, to, for you to go into spontaneous worship and do this. And so I took people from two different churches there. And then they would try to recreate that and plan it. You know, almost like well, we'll planned spontaneity. Planned spot. They would have progression. They, they, and 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 I took them to meet with them, and they'd say, "Well, that's not how we do it. We just trust our musicians." It's crazy. There is somebody leading. Yeah. There is somebody getting them in it and out of it. But they said it's like jumping rope, though. Mm-hmm. Once you're in it, you're in it. And then the worship leader will take them out. You know, they know how to get them out. They know how to get them in. But it's really, really unique. It's I mean, unique. Yeah. And that was so unique 15 years ago. I took people to try to do it and then they would overforce it and right. it, it never worked. And now mm-hmm. I see churches that are that are Baptist program contemporary churches that are that look like a, a charismatic church in worship style. Mm-hmm. I see them doing spontaneous worship now. Yeah. I, I it's become yeah. have you seen I, I mean Yeah, I, I and I, and I think one thing that I like I think it's awesome, but I think like you said, like even we we can still even program spontaneous worship. Yeah. And then it wasn't spontaneous. It's not spontaneous. Right. It's like I, you're back in the back. I like, took my worship leader from Pawnee <laughs> right. and he tried to plan the whole thing. Yeah. And you know what he did? We got to ready to do one of our Saturday night programs and he 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 really loved it. So he planned all this spontaneous and then he even gave me he said, I want you to read this and this pastor during these lulls. I said, that's not how they do it. Yeah. You just lull and trust me. I'll step in and speak as, you know, right. and, and here I can do that. We're, Cause Ben works that way so easily, Yeah, you know, but some churches that's a pain to yield to the Holy spirit. Mm-hmm. You come out of a church that's already used to doing that. So it's a little bit easier for you. But I think one of the things I've seen biggest change in the last 10 years is spontaneity of worship yeah. is kind of crossed over to many different churches that I thought would never have done it. Right. You know, yeah. and uh, I, I just think that's one of the things I've seen the biggest mm-hmm. here on my part. What What is the biggest, um, as you went into COVID, what did COVID look like for Victory Christian Fellowship, your church on the other side of Murfreesboro? You know, how did y'all manage that? Were you able to, did you have services? Did you have to stop services? What did you guys do? Yeah, so, you know, everything shut down. We stopped services for a little bit till we kind of figured out what our game plan was gonna be moving forward. Um, and we uh, recorded or yeah, did a live stream of the sermon every week. Uh, my parents would go and, you know, kind of help help uh, put that together and stuff. And 
so we did that um for a while and then for wednesday nights um one of the leaders in our church would you know just go on and do like a live stream of a of a message um in their own home or whatever and then actually i saw it today when i got on facebook or whatever uh was when we start was when we we did the drive-in services for a little bit where oh, really? we one of our our associate pastor has a big trailer and so he drove that in the middle like in the front of our building we put a podium up there microphone set up a quick little sound system we live streamed that too but um today a couple years ago was when we did our first live uh, live stream drive-in service and so when the weather was nice, we were able to do that. And then if it was crappy weather, or whatever. We but it was a challenge it. for you guys. It was, it. Yeah, it was a challenge. You know, it's like, I think a lot of it too, people got used to just being able to turn on the TV and sit back and yeah. stay in their pajamas and drink their coffee, and eat their pancakes and D don't you not think, really engage. Yeah, you and, know? and we did the same thing too. We, we went to live stream and we, and we really went up the curve good. But you can kind of see for a while there. And we did do the one thing we did really well, I thought with with is we, we from the start from first episode, we had spiritual greeters online interacting actively with each of our different platforms. Yeah. So they could literally ask a question on a Wednesday night and it would be asked in the question. It, I would literally be answering so and so's question immediately right. in, in the in the discipleship stuff or or they could speak to each other. So we had some ways for people to respond, connect, mm -hmm. say, I'd, I'd like to, so we did in, invite some engagement, but I do agree people were able to kind of sit back and, yeah. and and then the transition back was, I think a little harder because people weren't sure when to come and when yeah. we started to go back and I'd gotten used to this and I used to go three or four Sundays a week, but now I'm used to being able to do this for two. Right. So I do think some things have changed there. Yeah, so a, a, as you guys went back, you're not video streaming currently right now. So Correct. you yeah. left that, so you went back to regular stuff. What what do you what what do you think what do you think that on the other side have your people gotten back to normal yet? Uh, no, no, yeah, I I, yeah. I agree here too. <laughs> I think we're closer to normal. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think we're a hundred percent. I'll tell you why because we don't have some of our older people back right. yet. There's yeah. the older, most vulnerable mm -hmm. are still home comfortably. Yes, and so we haven't seen them come back because right. they're very high risk. And yeah. I understand that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I understand that. But, it, you know, at some point in time, I'm hoping to see some of them begin to transition mm -hmm. back yeah. as well, because we're still missing a, a good yeah. five, six, seven, eight of those yeah. families. And they're online. Right. And yeah. they interact online. So I think they're getting a good experience. And uh, But I, I still think we're missing a few people. Mm -hmm. I also think people's routine, it's it's not as dialed into the routine yet. Absolutely. Again. You, you yeah. see the same thing? Mm -hmm. What what, what when, when you come through all this, now I want you to be a little bit of a prophet, okay? All right. Where do you see over the next three, five, ten years? What would you say the biggest developments you see coming for worship? Where would you Where would you prophesy an enhancement, a change? Whether it be whether you see something you're worried about, or whether you see something you're excited about, where do you see that next big move coming? Because I, I think COVID, I think it helped our church develop a great online presence. Mm -hmm. It also got people lazy because of the online presence. Now, as we come out of this, the good part is people are traveling more. They are busier. We now have people here, but we also have something when they're away, they can still stay connected. So I think that's good. Before yeah. they just left, they came back and they missed two weeks mm -hmm. on vacation and they didn't know what in the world was going on. Yeah. Now they know what was going on. Maybe they've not engaged fully, but they are aware. Mm -hmm. So I, I think people being aware and being a part of their family, I've got a lot of people that they'll ride me and say, hey, I'm on the beach right now watching the service. We were sitting on the keys. And we, we wrote, hey, I'm watching you guys from the keys. Mm -hmm. It was great to be able to sit there and have coffee on my vacation and be connected to my faith community. Yeah. But that's not a substitute right. for being connected to yeah. faith. So as we come through this and people are different because of COVID, and what do you think will be a development in the next three, five, 10 years that'll, that'll change worship again or evolve worship? Yeah, I think just, um remembering that we are not supposed to isolate um however that looks like you know and um i think just re reminding ourselves that we're not alone even when yeah. we feel like we're alone and i feel like that was what was hard with COVID. it's like we weren't gathering we weren't seeing people mm -hmm. and so it was really easy to feel alone it was really easy to feel isolated and then now you know i think some people just got used to it uh -huh. and so they got used to it, they got comfortable with it, so now they kind of just don't mind it. They yeah, kind of prefer yeah. it. 
Um, you, th you think it further, you know, social media took us one direction. Yeah. It kind of began to isolate people from having a real conversation. Right. And it got down to 180 characters or whatever you rule them to type. Or it could be a meme. And it really kind of flattened our conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think you can take things wrong and, and you can get the, maybe somebody wrote something and they put a capital in there. Like for a long time, I would capitalize. I, I capitalize <laughs> a lot. I cap, I'm Italian. So for, hey, how you doing? I, I, how you doing? Capital. <laughs> I didn't know that's hollering. So I so finally said, why are you hollering at people? My daughter says, you're hollering at me in the text. I said, I'm not hollering, you just caps are on. You know, I'm an old person. We don't, I, who invented caps or being screaming? To me, capital was emphatic. It was and us I, millennials. Yeah, it's millennials. Y'all you, you messed it up, man. Sorry. And so so you could actually capitalize something and then all of a sudden these things, you're mad at them. Mm. You know, or you could, you could, Maybe say something flat and 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 just saying, "Hey, how you doing?" You like, well, you don't really care about me. You just said, "How I'm doing." You didn't ask about you know yeah. you know this. So people could get feelings hurt. They could feel disconnected. There's only so much you can do in the one dimension of a of a of a text. Right, and I think you also read it in whatever like like mood you're in. You in know? the mood you're in, yeah. Like, you're in a bad mood. You're depressed. You just got bit done you binge, binge watching something. some sort of Netflix episode that's sad. You know, and they you just killed somebody, and you're like, yeah, yeah they hate me too. True story. They're all against yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so social media, I think, changed the temperament of people anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And they isolate. I think there's a lot of young people. They can sit at a table like this, and rather than visit with each other, they'll text each other across the table. You know, really sad. And, and the other thing is, you can you can take a trip now with with kids in your car and go across the planet. And there's, we just got back driving back from Seattle to here through Montana and, and South Dakota, and Wyoming. It's beautiful, gorgeous. And there'll be kids today. We we're driving kids in the car. There were kids driving in the car. You can tell they're on vacation, and they're like this, looking mm -hmm. to playing whatever. I'm thinking, look up. I mean, there's it's gorgeous out here, and, and they go, well, I'll Google that, googling it and seeing it. Are different yeah and as good as our vacation pictures are you just couldn't take them in with mm -hmm. the camera mm -hmm. you know I, I think a lot of us are missing a, a whole dimension of life through through just googling it and and social media it. yeah and i think covid probably enhanced that and hurt that more yeah i agree would you agree yeah absolutely. And, 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 it, and it really particularly i think it hurt the church more than anything mm -hmm. because a lot of people are isolated anyway but the family of god was unique because we we gather one or two times yeah. a week and and we fellowship and that was cut off mm -hmm. and even where a church shut down many churches my home my home church shut down for months months they didn't call their people they didn't check on their people we checked on our people every yeah. week somebody called we brought so when we knew they got covid we took food we took we took stuff by we set it on their desk uh, set it on their porch beth and i back up and pray for them mm -hmm. so we did everything we could to stay connected but even th with doing that there still was a yeah. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of one right, another. Right. And live stream can help, but it's, I don't think it honors the text. Mm -hmm. mm. And and so I think we, I think it damaged the church. I think in some ways it helped the church Yeah, because we could be the church. And now coming out of that, I mean, you're thinking we're still kind of a little wounded from it. How do we get people re-engaged? How do we get people to trust again and to, come out of their tortoise shell or their COVID shell and kind of enter into community again, not just with God. Well, I was doing that at home by myself, but, mm -hmm. but that Bible doesn't say do it at home. It says you got to love God and love your neighbor. Right. So, yeah, that's a really good question. And I, I really think, you know, we can only do so much, you know, we can reach out, we can check up on them. We can do that sort of thing. But I think it really is just an internal thing that they have to have a desire, have a desire. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the, that's kind of the scary and sad thing is, People got so comfortable with how their routine changed with COVID that they don't have a desire to, you know, put clothes on, get in the car, and right. dr like it's an it's well, it's as an inconvenience. If we now. if we take what you said there, and I think that's really really good. I I think if you if you take before COVID, we had this social media that took the bar of interaction down. You could you can you can you can really hurt people's feelings, mm -hmm. and you could mean to or not mean to. It, it, it was almost like I'm anonymous or right. I can stalk you. We already took the bar down for interaction. Yeah. Then COVID took it down again. And so don't you think we've lowered the desire bar a lot oh, in, yeah. in, in our faith level? Mm -hmm. And we're going to have, I mean, I think individuals are going to have to take responsibility themselves for getting back to the heart of worship right. themselves. Right. And yeah. not just to private time. Because that becomes all about me time. I think you right. said earlier, you mentioned that that it's got to be about, a, you know, singing is an offering for you, singing is an offering for him, for you. 
giving out knowing who you are and, and giving your complete trust to the kingdom. You mentioned about doing your best to do your best. You gotta go. You gotta go do something. You gotta do something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then to have you intimacy give with something. him. But yeah. intimacy with him isn't just intimacy with him. It's intimacy with him and his family, the family mm-hmm. of God. So I think it's going to require that we lift the desire bar a little bit and begin to push that back up. Yeah. And and desire to be in his presence. So because I think a lot of people think, well, I'll, I'll just watch it online or I'll just, you know, I'll do this or this at, at a 2D level or 1D level, mm. I just don't think you can live your faith there. Yeah. I think you can maintain it. Yeah. For a season. It won't and go much deeper. It though. won't go much deeper. Yeah. I, and I think we maintained it okay, but getting out of it and getting back to it, I am seeing some of that in worship start to come back, people interacting and engaging. I think the song you did on Wednesday with the two of you, let I saw some people cut loose. I see it in our churches. Yeah. The first couple of Sundays back, people hardly sang. And we, we got about a month into being back heavily. And then we began to hear more people go, okay, I'm back, you know? Mm-hmm. And But we still have some people that aren't. And then some people that still aren't back here. Mm-hmm. So I do think we've got a lot of work to do there. Yeah. What, what Any other changes you see, you think challenges ahead of us? Um, well, yeah, I think it that just the, the lack of desire. And I also think, um, man, like it's not, I, I don't think it's as prevalent now as it used to be, but I mean, I, I think it's really important to, yeah, I, I guess I'm kind of afraid that the, comp- the the competitive mentality will kind of rear its head up again. Like, I, uh, what's his name? Rick Pino says it really good. He says, brothers compete, but fathers, is it complete or something like that? Like, um, be taking that step and being that example of this is what it looks like to be intimate with the Lord and knowing that um, my expression and my, like I said earlier, you know, my, his, how he has um, designed me to deliver that expression is valid to him. And I don't have to compete or think that someone else's version is better because that's just how they do it. That's not how I have to right. do it. Right. But yeah, I think it's that, that competition, like, mentality is really really dangerous brothers compete fathers complete i think that's what he says yeah i might have i think but but, yeah you know i think i I think there's two things out there let me throw these out i think i think competition can be healthy as long as we understand we're all going toward the same goal yeah i think i think what i see amongst some of the the worship leaders we've had in here i see great challenges to push each other and playing their guitars and learning new music yeah and, absolutely and pushing in that, people yeah, in, that in a context. way to challenging yeah. each other, challenging yeah. each other to, it's yeah. like it's like two billy goats out there kind of work playing yeah. to get ready that I, context i think is that's good. healthy yeah. when you're trying to cut the other one or de- right. degrade the other one right. then then you're you're competing at a level that is harming the community yeah so i i actually see two things i i see covid wiped out a whole group of churches they're gone yeah yeah yeah. COVID strengthened a whole group of churches. And then there's a group that survived that are yet to be defined. Mm-hmm. But what I have seen amongst, especially the pastors that are involved in the, the youth pastors or worship pastors that are involved in the senior sessions, some of the others that are in our sphere, I see an incredible college of, uh, of people working together to do creative and, yeah. and unshameful worship. Mm-hmm. I just sent our vans for the second time to a colleague of mine. He's got van broken down. He called me, said, can you help me? I said, the key's here, you know? And he just called me and, and, you know, we need to be partnering and helping. And and we made our TV studios available to other churches when we were doing stuff. I told other pastors in the Minister Alliance, if you want to come in and do your worship here, we worship from 10 to 12. This studio is yours. That's the the, the worship is yours. You know, we we had not come in and talked to Lucas about how to set all this stuff up. Um, You know, I think we there's a group that's wanting to work together. Yes. And then there's a group that doesn't want anything to do with anybody. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't think that not want to do anything with anybody is the healthy side. Right. No. Yeah. They, they're survive. They're in a survival That's mentality. That's pride. Like That's they think pride. they can do it on, the, on their survival. own. They don't need God and they don't need other people to help them do and it. And I think survival, yeah. I think if you're just trying to survive, you're dying. Yeah. By definition, because mm-hmm. just trying to survive is just trying to placate. Yeah. And, and the it's bare ju- minimum. Yeah. And, and what God demands is that we're making disciples and glorifying the kingdom. Yeah. And that means we got to push forward. Mm-hmm. And so I think there's, a, I think what you're doing in the Cedar sessions, what you're doing with other partners is there's an incre- incredibly unselfish group of leaders out there right now. And then there's a, then there's the, the church that's always been that, you know, what's going on in our corner is the most important thing and what's going on there doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think we can't afford for that now. 
I think the church is in enough trouble in the United States and in the world, frankly, with its influence right now. It's sad that we wouldn't be all working together to get people to come because the least amount of people are going to church that have ever mm-hmm. gone. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we, I think we do more to harm ourselves than to help ourselves. Yeah. So I think it's great. I love what I see what you guys are doing right now Thank you. and the partnerships and the cross thing. And I like, I, if you don't know this, but we, we did a good Friday service. I don't know if it's up on the web or not. Is, is, is our good Friday service probably up on Facebook, on YouTube? Yeah. Community faith church. We do. And, and we just ran into Hannah in coffee shop and said, Hey, Hannah, we're doing good Friday service. Can you come? And she said, yeah. And she leads one of the greatest songs we've had at our Good Friday service, which is powerful. Dustin Griffin, another one. Can you, can you come? Well, we're not doing it, we'll come. Uh, we, we, uh, Lopez. Daniel, Daniel Lopez, yeah. come. And we put on the best Good Friday service we've ever fun. done. It was, awesome. it was just anointed. I just hope we can do it again next year. I hope y'all don't do stuff next year. Uh, because, <laughs> I mean, I, we just, just and, and I just, what can we do for you? Let us know, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think if churches will begin to interact like that, we'll start, start seeing positive momentum yeah. into like the Like it's kingdom. okay to partner together. It's we don't okay. need to yeah. stay in our own the goal, box. The goal right. isn't to do better than yeah. someone. The right. goal is really should be to see somebody do better than you. Absolutely. Yeah, and help them lift them up and then pull right. them up. Yeah. I, I studied this years ago. Unfortunately, a lot of churches have to choose. Are we going to lift people up, lift up the name of Jesus, and that means lifting each other up, or are we going to have a crab mentality? I was sitting in my favorite place in Destin, Florida, is a little seafood store called Sexton Seafood, and it's great fresh seafood right there on the harbor. And I was in there kind of waiting my turn to get my fish for the day. We go every day and get fresh fish because I don't want to eat fish here in Illinois. It's all dead. I've been dead for years. And here, I want to go there where the fish has got clearness of its eyeballs and it's been caught that morning, you know. And so there's a big basket at the door. I sit there for a while. There's a long line of people. It's a basket of crabs, blue crabs. And they're all in there, the crabs. I mean, they're all in there. I mean, you know, got the business going on. And I watched them for 15 minutes. And I'm thinking if they can get across highway, what is that, High, highway 98 or 30, 90, 98. if they get, 90, get across 98, they're back in the water. And so I'd watch one mm-hmm. come up and get out. He's going over the edge to get out. And I watch this repeatedly. One would break out and get ready to go over there. I'm thinking, I'll hold the door for you, buddy. You get back just like, be like Disney and, and, and finding Nemo. Get to the sea. Get to the sea. <laughs> yeah. you get, if you get in that drainage ditch, you'll be in the water. You'll be free. And I'm thinking, if these crabs work, there's nothing holding them in this basket. Come on. If they would just work together, they're busy. They could, Half of them could get out. Yeah. They'd be back in the sea. And every time a crab would almost be out, one of the crabs in the crowd would grab them and pull them back in the basket. Wow. I never saw a crab get out of the basket. And I'll be honest with you, the time I was there, half of them should have been gone. Had they just lifted each other up and, and worked each other out, they could have done a crab ladder and it could have looked like <laughs> a, a crab, crab It could look like a crab exodus. You know, I think it's, I mean, it could look like Moses setting the deliverer free. Mm. But instead, every time one would get out, it's like the other ones would go, no, you're not gonna do that. You're gonna die with the rest. And I'm thinking people are picking them up by the dozens. And they're getting them checked out. And I'm thinking, those guys are going to hit boiling water next and be a picture for somebody's food on a holiday. And I I think the church, if we're not careful, we better get a lift up the name of Jesus and lift up each other mentality. And we got to get out of the crabby business. Yeah. You know, and and, because right now, churches that do the other are just pulling each other down. Mm -hmm. We need to be lifting up the name of Jesus and lifting up each other. You can't lift up God and not lift up each other because the cross is built on two axes, not on one. You know, you got to have a relationship with him. Got to have a relationship with each other. Mm-hmm. I think it's, I think you guys have expressed that so well, Hannah. Thank you. And um, I, I just think the fact that you can be at 23 years of age and be able to say, I'm comfortable in who I am. I want to, I want to give my fingerprint to God and I'm willing to work along the side and show up at some pastor who just begs you <laughs> to come for a good Friday and you show up and just gave your heart. Uh, it just speaks highly of your ministry and what you're doing. So thank you, thank you for everything you've done. I got my last question. Yeah. Last question before we get out of here. Ah, they're ready. You ever see the Muppets? Mm-hmm. Last question I want to ask all worship pastors is, you know, uh, as a worship pastor, um, well, let me let me just show you this. D- do you know Statler and Waldorf? Yes. The two old guys? Yeah. I- I'm going to play this. Now, it doesn't move, but you hear the audio. I got to use a static picture because they'll take us down uh, because, <laughs> you know, it's like Disney. Yeah. Okay. So, so listen closely to this. And just as a worship leader, think of you being the person on stage they're talking about. Here we go. 
I didn't hear anything. That was wonderful. Bravo. I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. I was terrible. Get him away. Hey, boo. Boo. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> You guys, you, okay. So, so as we close this show, as a worship leader, you put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. You get on the platform every week, and and while you want everybody to join you and just be a partner with you and be vulnerable, there are people that show up thinking they bought seats at the high level, like Statler and Waldorf, and you know you have to deal with the critics, the the old Muppet guys or girls, or no, no, we're not going to be sexist here. It could be anybody being the Muppets, but typically it's old old mm -hmm. guys. I mean, let me be honest with you, uh, that gripe about your song selection. They hated the songs. They thought the drums were too loud, too noisy. Uh, the haze, you don't use haze, do you? Mm -mm. Yeah, you, they, churches use haze. They go, well, the haze made me sick. I can't come there anywhere. It makes my eyes water. <laughs> and you, when you tell them what the haze is made of, they go like, oh, okay. It's some sort of chemical they put in the air, you know. You find out it's water. You know? I, 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 it makes me think the light. The lights are causing me to have vertigo. You know, the lighting flash, or, or the songs too fast. The songs too slow. Mm -hmm. the songs too old. Songs too new. They didn't sing the third third verse of that hymn. I'm mad. How how do you, as a worship person, deal with the criticism of mm -hmm. being on the platform? Because you're going to get it. Yeah. How do you the, manage that in your life? The um inner version of me wants to just say it's not about you but i don't want to say it in a rude way <laughs> why'd you sing that bridge we're 16 not, times we're not yeah. singing why about, did you see that bridge 16 yeah 16 like, times we sang that last one. time i checked we weren't singing about you but anyway um i just <laughs> i think um just you know we, i have to remember too i don't know what so and so dealt with this week right. that's making them have this attitude um these guys were grouchy every week, though. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah, well, so, no, no, no. So, I mean, but I some can't people, really, it could just yeah. be—it could be the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, well, this is this is the opportunity for you to come and let God minister to your heart and give you what you need. But, but I some think, people are just sour. They're yeah, just, they are. They're, they're there for the wrong reason. Yeah. I just, right. There's the door. <laughs> there, no, no. I, I think that's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> I don't yeah, know yeah. I, do. I don't know. Why, what to tell why, you. why are you here? <laughs> There's plenty I was here of other, to lead there's you. There's a church just down the street. Right. There's so many options. That's, that's, what, my, get, get, motto. Yeah, that's my motto. <laughs> I can tell you where there are three other dead churches. They won't move a bit. Go there. <laughs> I'll entertain you. I, I'll entertain you, and we'll, both churches will be better for it. <laughs> both churches will be better off. You yeah. won't be miserable each week. Yeah. We won't have to look at that sourpuss up in the in the balcony going, ah, we ain't that. You know, it's too yeah. many. Why do we my, sing that chorus? My, well, pastor, that? my pastor says, uh, <laughs> like, if. You know, he says, turn that friend upside down or else we'll put a coat hanger in there. It's like, to oh, <laughs> I like that. I, I do. I, do, would be painful. I don't think people realize <laughs> people don't put themselves out, whether pastor or something, just to, for your criticism. And, and there's always a check. You, you, you select things and there could be a good criticism. Mm -hmm. Somebody may have a real point. We had we we had a light that was told to some people. Yeah, it was bothering me. I saw where it was and I, I went to Lucas. Hey, I had two people say this light's going to cause us like like anxiety. It was like you know, red light. And right. so we just tilted it like one degree and it changed everything. That one degree. But the person that came to us is somebody that's, I mean, just they're loving us. Hey, can you, you know, we can handle criticism that mm -hmm. helps us be better. Yeah. But when you're just trying to break things down, you know, you really need to think about your personality. When you're pointing fingers and going, I don't like that. Remember there's three fingers coming back yep. at you. You got to ask yourself, why can I not relax that? Why can I not realize that maybe that song's not for me or that mm -hmm. version? Maybe that's for somebody else. How do I worship through them vicariously? Mm -hmm. And I see that person that's deeply in. The, I, I've seen where people gripe about something, but yet the whole church is conversely deeply in it. I'm thinking, yeah. did you not notice your fellow worshipers? You know, and maybe you can't get there on that song, but could you look to your right and go, they're getting it. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to just, hey, praise God. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's a real challenge for a worship leader to kind of fill up, get, get their feeling where if not, you can be blown around by those complaints mm -hmm. and they can begin to destroy you. Because even though you're trying to lead before the Lord, we all have feelings and we don't want them hurt. Yeah, absolutely. And we're not trying to hinder people from worship. Yeah. Either. Unfortunately, musicians and worship leaders are some of the most sensitive people on the planet. <laughs> really because they're though. music, they're, because absolutely. you're putting your heart out there. Yeah. You, you, you've given week. your time, you're a volunteer, you're being whatever. You, you've worked out there. And, and whether it's a song you play or a song you've written, I mean, people don't realize. I mean, you, you've put your heart in it. It's not just a song, that's your life. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you don't even think everybody's going to like it. You already feel like nobody's going to like it. 
if the last thing you need is a fellow brother in Christ crucifying you because they didn't like something Confirming about that it. they did not. Like yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, like I said, we're not saying somebody can't have healthy criticism. Yeah. We can all take that. Absolutely. But the question is, are you just a burr in the saddle? You know, I, I, I don't think that's what the church is about. I think the yeah. church is about building the kingdom of God and lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. And I, I, I just wanted to ask everybody how they handle their Stotler and Wardorf because yeah. you're going to have them. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just tell you a secret. You get rid of the one couple, you tell them beat it down the road to the Baptist church and good, they're gone. But it's amazing how in about three weeks you'll have a new one appear. Because I do think the Lord is testing you with them to see how you're going to handle your identity. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you've already are so strong in who you are and what you want to be and comfortable with it. I think you're just going to do great with that. Thank you. And just maintain that. And, and, and you know what, you may have to tell say, Hey, just, Hey, if you can't love this, love me through it, if you would. And, and God's still working on me too, mm -hmm. or, or love your, your neighbor by it. And if not, uh, as I say, uh, move on dot org, move on dot org. <laughs> Ease on, all right, we can do that. Ease on down the road. On. That is a, was that from the whiz? Ease on down. <laughs> Ease on down the road. Would you like an address or a website? Yeah, yeah, we'll give you one. So I think that's always a good action. Anybody any follow up questions, sir? No. I think it's been great, Hannah. You you are just fantastic. Let me Thank just say you. again, Victory yeah. Christian Fellowship. What time on Sundays? Ten thirty. Ten thirty. And what do you do on Wednesday nights? Is it Bible study? Is it service? Um, do you play? I do, yeah. My brother, he plays the box drum, and I just we do just do like strip down acoustic worship, and then we do get into the Bible. Well, she was. So, you, so hey, can we can we extend the same thing if they get Wednesday shut down because of weather? Can she come over on Wednesday <laughs> mm -hmm. and play the box drum? We, we have a box drum. Of course, we have. We have gym bays, box drums. We have lots of. Nice. I can play the box drum. We got real ones from Africa with skins that play great. So we got. Little, little, yeah, cajones or what is it? Cajon, yeah, 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 yeah. You just come on either day, Wednesday or Sunday. We will try not to shoot your tire out for the next week. I appreciate it. Yeah, for the next week. Give me a break. Yeah, yeah give me a break. Because you know, since you had a flat tire, we feel bad already. <laughs> we didn't do it. But go out to Victory Christian Fellowship. Check her out in Murfreesboro. And uh, you can also find Hannah on Cedar Sessions. Go find those as well. And those are coming up. Thank you so much for being in here. Thank you for, for having this me. this three-part sub-series. It's been just fantastic. I think the future worship's bright and shiny with you in it. Thank you. And uh, we want to see you around a lot. Go to uh, www.onthedock.org. Find out more about On The Dock. And you can find all of our links and broadcasts and platforms there and info at on the doc.org is our email address where you can ask questions go check us out on youtube spotify itunes please subscribe hit like we want to start pushing that up to 150 we're going to try to catch the cedar session people you guys are like what are you, i saw this week is like 310 uh, 350 three something yeah. three what three Whoa. something Three, a little over. I think it's three. Times. I can check. I was watching. I was jealous. I was when I was getting your stuff. When I was thought, I wonder how they're doing. Three twenty three. Yeah, three twenty. Oh. I remember when you guys went over hundred. You guys bo booming. It's when you get over the hundred. We're right at a hundred, Lucas, right now, and we're supposed to start jumping because of that. So I got to get working yeah, on that. I think we. I think we lost some subscribers when my video dropped. So yeah, they, they oh. they're they're out of there. <laughs> I tried to resubscribe. Maybe I desubscribed. I got to go back. Yeah. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and get her our social media. Feel free to ask some questions about Hannah and to her. We'll get those to her. She can respond back to you. And hit subscribe, like, notify when you find us on those platforms. And go to my Patreon about being a partner. Four levels of partnership, three levels of sponsorship. We would love to have you. And if you can't get to Murfreesboro, we'd love to have you at Community Faith Church. 10 o'clock on Sundays, Wednesdays at 630. You can go to COFTV.com to watch our embedded viewer or find any of our platforms. We have Facebook, YouTube, uh, Getter's coming soon. We're on Rumble and SermonNet. So we've been glad to have you here out of church. Mother Beth, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ben, thank you for hosting. Thank you. And Hannah, again, thank you. As we go out on this episode, as we have, you can enjoy Hannah. What's the song you're going to do? Keep Me. She's going to do her own song. It's her original song, Keep Me. Enjoy that. We'll be back soon with other broadcasts and other episodes of On the Dock. It's been glad to have you here. And we're checking out now at On the Dock with Pastor Troy. Presence.
of my folks keep me gentle and keep me faithful keep me only wanting your will oh you I just want you and nothing else no one else will Just want you.